Hey, today we're going to talk about nail sealability and some research that's happening regarding that topic here at the University of Texas JJ Pickle Research Center. You know, as a builder over the years, I've heard lots of manufacturers talk about how their product seals around nails and is self-healing, but I'm not sure that's totally true. In fact, I'm getting a lot of this information from Beth Ann, who wrote a fantastic article in Construction Specifier, one of the geeky rags that I love to read. Beth Ann, you did a bunch of testing on the products that you guys also have on that long-term exposure durability study uh, here at the JJ Pickle Research Center. Tell me about the testing that you did. Um, so exactly, you're exactly right. We took um, a lot of the specimens that we have out there and tested them to the nail sealability standard, which is ASTM D1970. Um, and so that is a very old standard. It's an ice and water shield standard from the 1970s that we used. And so that standard is meant to test basically roofing membranes that have a roofing nail penetrating them and finding out if they can keep water from leaking through that membrane, correct? Exactly. So how does the test get performed? What, what methods are you using? Um, so basically you have a half inch sheet of plywood and you cover that plywood with whatever membrane you have. Mm -hmm. um, and then you drive two nails into the membrane um, and back them up a quarter of an inch. Okay. And after that's completed, you um, cut the bottom out of a one gallon paint can and seal it with silicone on top. And then after that assembly is uh, put together, you're putting five inches of water in there, correct? Correct. So yep. basically you've got a nail that's got five inches of water over the top of it and you're trying to see if that membrane is gonna seal tightly around that. And remember the, the fastener on the nail is not tight against the membrane because she's backed those up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do with the, with the test at that point? Um, we place it in an environmental chamber uh, for three days at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so they're cold too, which mm -hmm. is gonna probably potentially shrink the material. And what were the results? Did you, did you find what you expected to uh, happen with these? Um, it was actually very interesting. A lot of the manufacturers actually state that they passed the standard, but when we tested only half of the products, none of them passed except for just one product. Wow, that's amazing. So all of them leaked, mm -hmm. some of them a little bit and some of them a lot? Yeah. Um, and what was the type of product that actually passed the test? Um, it was actually a fluid applied. Interesting. So one of the fluid applied products was able to seal around those nails. Mm -hmm. All the others failed miserably. Very, very interesting results. It seems to me that uh, the takeaway for me as a residential builder is that I should not rely on a membrane to be self-healing or self-gasketing um, or really seal, seal around nails. Of course, some of that is probably happening on the job site but we need to assume that those penetrations can make a leak in the future. And so I believe that really the best thing to do for a residential contractor is to in, in, uh, involve a rain screen in your project, uh, whether that's a small gap or a big gap, to really make sure that water that's getting behind that cladding, which of course all water is going to get behind there, is gonna dry out. Yeah. Beth Ann, thank you so much for your research and uh, look for the link in the description below if you wanna read the full article that Beth Ann did. Thanks for joining me everybody, we'll see you next time.